a Christian, not going to hurt my feelings. I got my president. He lives right here. Amen. Of course, you know, as, as a grandpa, I'm not going to refuse my grandkids uh, presents and stuff. You know, but my point is, Christmas is about him. He's in control of Christmas. It may look like the world is spinning out of control, but it isn't. It, all, it is all in the hands of Jesus Christ who made it. All things are working toward the purpose for which he designed it for. Amen? The one who made it all controls it all. Born in a Bethlehem 2,000 years ago as a helpless infant. He lived here in poverty and rejection only to die a horrible death on the cross. He did all of this because he loved us. Romans 5 a. But God commanded his love toward us and that while we are sinners, Christ what? Died for us. That's what it's all about. So what is the power of Christmas? It is, is it a fat man in a red suit taking toys to, uh, to good little children? No. Is it a red-nosed reindeer or a magical snowman? No. Is it elves, presents, huge meals, family get-togethers? No. The power of Christmas is God in a manger. Amen. Humble himself so that you and I could have eternal life. That's the power of Christmas. This is the reason we celebrate this day. That is the essence, the essence of this whole season. You want to write Christmas? Then consider the person of Christmas. Consider the power of Christmas. Mm -hmm. Lastly, consider the purpose of Christmas. Verses 4 and 5 in our text. The question that begs to be asked is why? Why? Why did the Creator desire to become a part of creation? Why did God put on human flesh and walk among men? Why did he come into this world to live and to die? What is the purpose of Christmas? Number one, he came to bring life into deadness. When Jesus came into this world, he entered the world filled with dead men. But these dead men don't know that they are dead. They don't. They're like, they're like when I was growing up as a kid. I didn't live on a farm but in Maine, but, 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 but as growing up as a kid, we had one cow, we had like 40 chickens, three pigs in the backyard. Oh, what was interesting, one day when I was a little kid, about six, seven years old, my dad, my mother wanted chicken for supper, so follow me, son. So I said, okay, dad. And that was my first experience. He got the chicken, put, chopped it on the thing, threw it away. And the thing's going on. I said, Dad, he doesn't realize he's dead. Yeah. <laughs> Same thing spiritually. Yeah. People don't realize they're walking dead. Yeah. Huh? Zombies. Yeah. Walking dead. That's exactly the way lost people are. Look at Ephesians chapter 2. In Ephesians chapter 2, I want you to notice in verse 1, And you hath he quickened, who were what? Dead, Dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince and power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Jesus came so that, the de so that dead men could live. That's the purpose of Christmas. When a dead, lost man meets Jesus, he's passed from what? Death unto life, according to John 5, 24. When a dead man becomes alive in Jesus, everything becomes what? New, according to 2 Corinthians 5, 17. He came to bring life into deadness. Jesus is the strength of earthly life. We are alive today only by His good grace. You all get up today and you're here at church. Amen? Amen. It's only by God's grace that you're here. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? I tell you, the older I get, and I'm not that old, I get out of bed and say, and I walk up and say, oh, thank you, Lord. I got out of bed today. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know? You have to. You see, Jesus is the strength. My, the Bible tells us in Job 1.21, he said, The Lord taketh, the Lord what? Giveth, giveth the Lord taketh away. Yeah. That's what? Life. Yeah. If God so choose, boom, you could be gone this afternoon. Yeah. You see, Jesus is the is strength, gives us strength on this earthly life. Amen? Yes. Jesus is the secret of an effective life. It has been said that three things make life worth living. Self fit to live, faith fit to live by, and a purpose, amen, to live for, to live for. Only Jesus can give you those three things. According to John chapter 10, verse 10, I come to give them life and give them life more abundantly. He, he gives life and he gives it abundantly. You know what I like about that verse? The Greek word abundantly there means superior, surpassing. It means to be uncommon. This is the kind of life he gave to me. He gives life purpose. He gives it abundantly. My life is superior because of him. It also means extraordinary. I have an extraordinary life because Jesus lives in me. Amen? Listen, you don't have a dull life, believer. Okay. You've got an extraordinary life. Live it that way. Amen? Amen. Amen? Good night. Live it that way. People ask, what's wrong with you? Ah, oh, glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> Thirdly, Jesus is the source of eternal life. Mm -hmm. Those who know Jesus by faith will live eternally. Amen? Look at John 11. Look at John chapter 11. In John chapter 11, verse 25 and verse 26. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were what? Dead, Dead yet he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believeth thou this. You see, he makes life permanent. Real living is more than walking Talking, eating, breathing, loving, real life is abundant life. A joyful life that is only found in Jesus Christ, our wonderful Savior. Amen? Amen. That's living. 1 John 5, 12. Turn over there. First John chapter 5, verse 12, He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. So, so a person does, that, that does not know Jesus Christ is not really living. They're just existing. That's why it's important to get out there with the message. Amen. Amen. And then notice he came to bring light into darkness, according to our verse. Now, a person who does not know Jesus Christ is spiritually dead. Spiritually also darkened. Jesus came to change all of that. That's what Christmas is all about. He came to change all that. That's so important. Jesus said in John 8, 12, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Jesus came to deliver the lost from their darkness and to bring them into his glorious light. That's the real meaning of Christmas. Ephesians 5 a for ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye what? Light in the Lord. Walk as children of life. Acts 26, 18, to open the eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith. That is in me, Jesus said. Colossians 1.13, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Amen? That's what Christmas is all about. 